Oh, sticking off the off the sock. Yeah, this is what we're doing here. We're giving him all, all the glory. We plead everyone. We plead the church. And we ask for those who could to stand up in reverence of the Lord of the Lord. We're gonna read right now. Act Act twenty seven. Act twenty seven. We're going to read some verses of this chapter. We're going to start at verse 4. Twice those brothers who were on the table to put the volume down just a little. Thank you. The word of God says, When we put to sea from there, we sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea, we just off. And we came to Mary, the, the city of Lucy. There was the sentry of Fauna, Alexandria. Alexandria. Okay. Verses 8. Passing with difficulty, we came to the place called Fair Heavens, near the city of Lucy. Verse 9. Now, when much time had been spent, and the snow was not dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advertised them, saying, Men, men I, per I perceive that this voyage, this voyage will end with desire and much loss. Not only the cargo and the ship, but also all our lives. 11. Nevertheless, the centurion was more pursued by the helmet, and the owner of the ship didn't buy the things spoken by Paul. 12. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter, the energy advertised to set sail from there also if by any means they could reach Phoenix a harbor to create opening toward the sun verse 21 it says but after long absence from food Paul stood Paul stood in the midst and then said men you should have listened to me and not sail to create and including to desire and lust. And now I and now I erg but you take the heart. For there will be no loss a life among me among you. But only the ship. From there stood me by me, then I an angel of God, whom I belong and whom I serve, says, Do not be afraid, Paul. I must be brought before Caesar. And I intend God has credit created you and all those have sailed you verse 44 says and the rest on some of the boards and some of the parts of the ship and so it was they all escaped and safely safely to the land let's close our eyes god at this time we adore you we said we thank you for all the songs for the glorifications for the church that's here together god we are a body we are family and we ask now that you might be talking to us through your revelations. God, show us everything that's beyond the letter. 
teach us how to live and take care of our lives so we can be inside of your blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. The brothers may be seated. At this time, God showed through the spiritual gifts a family of <clears throat> that they were already about this, their sons that is <clears throat> young. They just passed through a hard time and they saw <clears throat> and they saw the difficult difficulty really close and it was just like a storm. But the Lord has a word for this family, for this couple. Even though they have passed through this, even though they still <clears throat> with this difficult time, God wanted us to tell you that you have courage to, we want to make you guys happy. And the happiness will come. The task that we just read, uh, tell us about the story. The story about Paul that was chose to be presented by Caesar. And on the way, there was a lot of reasons. And there's a prophetic, prophetic uh, thing about our lives that it was going to be essential for, for us. We have been prisoner, uh, prisoners of Christ. It was called the servant of the Lord. The word servant, it means by Paul, um, slave. Those who have no, no freedom for their lives. Those who obey someone. And that's how Paul was. And for the word, how are we? How the, does the word does the word says that we are? Our neighbor says. You don't live, now you're Christian, you don't live, you have no life, you stay in a prison, prison, in the church, in the seminars, of the Bible, you don't live, you have no life, for the world, you're prisoners, but well, well, we know that we are free, because we are servants of the Lord, the Lord that take care of us at all times, there are things that we go through, uh, our nature thanks everything is over I'm, I'm in a certain way that I know that I'm not gonna live I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna be able to do it then we get sad and we know the, there's many difficulties that we go through and we know oh this is the last one God prepare my spirit to receive your glory because I'm not gonna support this in the word of God says after after the struggle, he's gonna help us because he doesn't let anyone, he doesn't let anything happen to us that we are not able to get it done. Because God gives us the strength. Because when God called Gideon, he <coughs> says, because Gideon, what Gideon was doing, it was something prote uh, prophetic. It was, it wasn't the plan of God. It is our biggest desire. It's our fight every day. We go out to go to work every day. Our kids go to study, go to school. But our fight every day, it is this: God, that I survive, not just physically, but you hold on, that my faith still, that I can still wake up and stay up so we can still walk that I that I can might be the way that you want that by a blink of a eye you may come and get us all to go to heavens Paul was in this situation but Paul didn't didn't let anyone take over the brothers might read all the verse 27 and the brothers will, will see a lot of things more prophetic because this is a mystery God might read and go over and over because the brothers will find some revelations 
<coughs> some other revelations that we are gonna tell here. S some revelations God will give us. God will remind us. The first detail is this: Paul, uh, after being a prisoner and being the situation that he didn't want to be in, <coughs> he was being brought to a place that he really didn't want to go, and that's how the things work in the presence of God. When we met, when we met God, when we met God, we go to a place that our nature don't really want to go, but the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit of God always take us there but when we get there we feel satisfied we feel happy in the presence of God because serve the Lord is, is not letting you but God lives in me it's our desire it's what really matter at the end of the chapter the brothers can see that there was there was a walk. They were in a way. The wind didn't let them go go forward. Everything was going wrong. So they got in a place called. And when we got there, and our life is just like that. We have difficulties. The wind goes always to the other side. You know, we always got on that place, that place that Jesus is there. That place that Jesus started talking to us, started talking to us personally, calling us by name, taking care of all our needs, with all the details, everything that we are ashamed to tell. But God, <coughs> God doesn't have shame of us. But we have a shame because we know that he's taking care. But when they got in that place, the board says they didn't want to stay there. They want to go forward. And how many people, when they met, when they meet Jesus, they say, "Oh, I know where I'm going. I already met Jesus. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep keep my trip." And they know that. If it was difficult before, now it's going to be difficult, more difficult, because after they meet Jesus, they want to keep their lives, but it's not like that. Just like Paul, when he met the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says, uh, your way is going to be really, <coughs> it's going to be really difficult, it's, it's going to be really dangerous, not just for our lives, but everything that's going to be in the ship. Don't take a break of the. Don't take a break of Christ. Don't take a break of Jesus, because we can never be away from Him. Don't say, "Oh, I'm gonna go to the trip. I'm gonna go out. Oh, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna pray. I'm not gonna go to church. I'm not gonna read the Bible." No, don't say that. That's what. That's what happens when we take uh, spiritual breaks. It got worse. Our lives get worse. We can feel in our mature lives. The people feel in their health and in their spiritual lives. How many of us sometimes without old and we one day said, Oh, I know more than God. This is what the word says. It says the word says danger, don't go because there's gonna be a lot of danger in there. And the word says, the centurion uh, <coughs> makes more of the master than the word of that days. God, in these days, when the spiritual, your spiritual is getting old, and we think that's better to listen what some people say, and that's when the problem comes. Because the word of God, it's a... Uh, It's a twin sword. And then we listen for those who technically know everything. They know about ships, they know about storms, about winds. But when we got in this way, this way of ditching, when we get lost, and the word says, and this time, the first time, the first thing they done, it is something that we should never done, which I never do. What they do, 
we build, they throw away all the everything in the bowl that was important. But that was wrong because the bowl, the bowl it is a place that we pray. We pray for others. We pray for those who are sick. When someone is having a difficult time financially, it is when we help them. When there's a family problem, we are body. Just like we have heard, when just like if if our finger gets hurt, our whole body helps. And there's other protections and everything. And on that time that they didn't hear the voice of Paul, that the Holy Spirit was there. The first thing that they done was they threw away all the everything that was important in the bowl. And that's why we have to take care. So we should never, the Holy Spirit says, we should never throw away what Jesus has given us. When we were talking about that, we want to mean we were talking about the process of God. We we're not talking about a church and religion. We we're talking about about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our ship, our savior ship. He's the one called a good place, a place that we are safe for the glory of Jesus. And brothers, the times got got harder, got worse. The hurricane come came. On the and we you know that we have the the list of the names of the hurricanes and before then they had the names of the hurricanes the name of the hurricane was Neokilon and this hurricane brought a lot of destruction at that time that they disobeyed the Lord but the Holy Spirit is his miseries the Paul after the time he gave a word a word of promises of faith and because the word says that the faith went away because of the danger because they got in a boat and went into the they went in the ocean the storms came and they lost the faith that they were gonna be safe the the word don't have this faith but that's why the Jesus brought the, the church, so the church may help bring more people and um, bring faith to the people. That's why we church we have to take care to never lose the faith to to be safe. And that's why the Holy Spirit talks to us every day. That's why because every then all the early domes, all the services. Every activity with the adolescents, youths, kids, they're really important information for our lives. Informations that will help us to stay in the weight of God. It's so simple. The only thing we need is listen to the Word of God. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And the promises that Paul had was stay happy. Because we're not going to lose any other life. You were in a project. You you met Jesus. There's there's hope for life. And today the Holy Spirit is saying the secret for our lives, for our life, is stay on the bow. Stay on the bow, and you're gonna be safe. And the last verses that we say was in the rest of some words. The storms came. Everything on the bow was thrown away. The bow. There was a moment that they didn't have any more control for the bow. They, they just let the bow go. And there's some there's some times that we're not gonna be able to fight. We're gonna look at God and we're gonna say, God, I don't know what to do. And that's what and that's when he comes. He says, Now I'm gonna take care of your life. And that's what they did. They they gave up and they like God and they let God take care of it. And they believe in God, and they let God conduce the bow in their lives. My brothers, when we look at something, though we are not going to be able to do anything else, the Bible says that's what He wants for us. He wants us to, we, He wants us to need, to need Him. 
because he's going to be the one that's going to help us. He's going to be the captain. He's going to be the master. He's going to be the one that's going to give us the victory to, so we can get in the land safe. The faith came back. The bow, it was destroyed. But the word of God says, uh, some in the ocean, the other, others in parts of the bow, but they all got in the land safe. The fight that we have, the spiritual fight, some, sometimes, it's gonna ask for something that's really precious for us. When they threw everything away from the bow in the ocean, it was something important. But they know, but they knew that they were gonna do, they were gonna have to sacrifice that so they could be safe. And what it wants to say is, we don't have to look for what we want. Like, oh, when it doesn't need that, we just need to let Jesus take care of it. Because Jesus knows what we need. Jesus knows where we need to go. And Jesus knows what's going to be good and it's going to preserve us. If you got here tonight with a fire, a fire in your house, in your family, you are this couple that Jesus shown that have been in this situation and the tiredness came, the sadness came and you have no more courage to keep going the Holy Spirit is saying I'm giving you strength, I'm giving you faith I'm, I'm giving you my promises stay in the bow, stay still because Jesus is going to be giving you the victory and this is the word of the Holy Spirit for me, for me and for you look up don't look at the reasons, don't look at the storms, don't look at the winds, the winds are always coming, always coming the other way, the winds always will come the other way, but if you keep walking in the light, even when the, even when the winds are in the wrong way, we keep saying, Maranatha, Lord comes, let's close our eyes and glorify the Lord, Lord that has sustained us, have been protecting us, have been led us to get in this, in this promised land. And we can say, God, we got here by faith, and we are safe because we know that Jesus has helped us. He has been our boats, He has been helping us. We're going to stick with Him because He's the one that loved us first. Amen.
invite the church to stand up at this time. Glorify the name of God because He, he has been preserved as materially, spiritually, your family. Even after all the storms, God has sustained us because of His love, because of His infinite love. Adore the Lord. stand up the soldiers when and they kill all the prisoners so none of them will escape interesting right this is the this is the the thing of the adversary the evil this is the world have the world have ideas of that for the kids for the youths for the adolescents this is the idea of the, the world kill it's better kill so no one escapes the centurion trying to save Paul as for those who could to jump in the ocean and save themselves. Another idea, the, <clears throat> the enemy of our lives is going to give us a lot of ideas. Oh, it's better you run. It's better if you run. If you're, gonna, if you're going through this, oh, <clears throat> let's do this and let's do that. It's ideas, ideas that go, that it doesn't go right with the ideas of the God. The centurion says, oh, throw yourself in the ocean and go swimming. They're like, oh, go in the ocean. Go in the ocean, go swimming, try to save your life. This is not the project, but this is not the project. The project says, it's on the boat and everyone's going to be safe. And everyone was safe. If you got here tonight and you have, you have been through, <coughs> you have been through this, all the difficulties and you have been and you have heard all this all these ideas that doesn't come from God it's still on the boat don't follow that so everyone can be safe the love is a different kind of love be given to God. Holy, holy, holy is his name. The church may be glorifying the name of God. Open your hearts and say, glory to the Lord. The, fill the Lord Jesus. All the glory may be given to him. Hallelujah. Some lives that once you might be glorified after this song. We are here to give glory to the Lord. The gratitude of our hearts. Those life that he wants you might be glorifying the Lord. God, we thank you. And we want to thank you because this, this love is actually real. This love that shamed us. And we thank you because we are nothing without you. You have sustained us. 
you have, we have to make us stand up and stay in your presence, of letting us feel your presence, and we know we, that we are nothing. We thank you, we glorify you, because one day you brought us here, you brought us to your presence, where, where we were, were, if it wasn't for you. We thank you, Lord, for your conditional love, for your grace that have been with us, and we want to thank you because <clears throat> your hand is, it is on top of us. We want to thank you because we know that we are a people more than winners. And we thank you for everything. We thank you for being here. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this word that was revealed. And we thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. God, we also glorified. And we also thank you. Because you are the reason. We are all reason. Because you are the reason of all things that we have. We thank you because we are in your presence. Because we want to thank you for everything for your name. Because we are servants that, <coughs> that give our lives to you. In your presence is up. We want to. We want to. I want to thank you, Lord, for for my <coughs> for those who are nice to me, my husband, my kids. I want to thank you for this week because you have your hand on top of us, protecting us, not letting anything happen. I want to thank you for <coughs> everything that I've not for everything that you have not letting us, anything happen to us, all the death thing that you have not let, that you haven't let anything happen to us. We thank you for the love, for the promises, and we want to thank you because your promises are real. You don't, <coughs> you're never wrong, and we thank you. We we'll thank you for the tonight for all the songs that we sing to you, for every single life that's here tonight, for the angels that you send to be here with us, that we that you might be with us, between us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. church my servants I am with you nothing will separate us will separate you from my love tonight I put you all together in my presence to make you guys happy to give you to give everyone strength to <clears throat> to take care, take take away all the sadness and I'll make you happy this time this in this way to the celestial, celestial Jerusalem, <clears throat> my brothers. In this fight, you don't, you don't have to fight. I'll take care of everything. I'm the one that give the order of the ocean, the winds to come down. So glorify my name, my servant, my sister. You, the the fell, the first side. I want to give up of all the struggle that I've been through. Your God says, get up and walk, because I've been giving you the victory. I'm the God of victory. And the victory that you, that you have been waiting is going to be planted between your family. And this ch church will be blessed when they see when they see your victory. We're fine, church, because <clears throat> you're going to be with us. Hallelujah. God, take the service on our glorification. <clears throat> Despite it. we thank you. Again, all our songs, all our praise. Because we have listened to us. Thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church might be seated. Let's sing one more song. Those who need assistance, we are here. Bless be the name of God. Uh, peace of the Lord to everyone. Amen. <clears throat>